previously on Spirit Hunter Deathmark. Oh, I know. I'm going to use this fucking gun. <laughs> I got five bullets in this motherfucker. I'm going to shoot, shoot the shit out of this bush. Take this bush. Oh, well, I'm, uh, I'm all out of ideas. What do you think, show? <laughs> yes, you're right. I think we are screwed. And now back to being demonetized. Sneako B, back with some more Spirit Hunter Deathmark. When we last left off, ah oh shit, guys, I just realized we we literally left the woods from the the guy that is literally responsible for our fucking Deathmark. What are we doing? We should probably stop pussing out and just go back there. But I'm going with Cho again or Machida, because Christine's obviously useless. She stays here. All right, bye guys. Here we go. Hi, I'm the ghost that hates old men. Go find me a lady and bring it back. Oh, fuck, God damn it! Go back to the mansion. Hi, puppet. Hi. We're back. Yes. All right, Christine. Never mind. Come back. Here we go. Here we go. Come back. Come back. Come on. But yes, after rummaging around the forest, some getting killed by many bees, finding other people killed by bees stuffed in hives, and finding an incredible variety of different roots, we finally faced off against Shimio and did the obviously smart thing first time and just blew his ass up. Yeah. Breathe in this noxious fume, bitch. Ah, oh, shit. Machine is dead. Oh, well, never mind. Lo lo load that back. Never mind. Have a tasty honey vegetable. Oh, that tastes so good. Me die from deliciousness. I bleh. Oh, wow. Well, it did work. And with that, all of our death marks disappeared and we all lived happily. I'm just kidding. I still got mine. It's so does Christy. We're all fucked. But yeah, so I, I was having a hard time sort of understanding what was going on exactly with Shimio versus uh, Hanahiko, which I feel like was a lot easier to follow. This one was definitely a bit like a little more opaque with its details, and you guys helped to elaborate it a bit. And someone who did a really good job of doing that was uh, TakathStorm9270, who last episode said, there's a quote from the art book that gives a more straightforward explanation of Shimio. A lunatic who created a suspicious nonprofit group that claimed it would release its members from pain and guide them to a promised land. In the end, he had all members commit mass suicide. However, he failed to kill himself and due to the curse placed on the force by his horrible deed, became an undead monster. As he was the only one who failed to take the promised journey with his family, he's painfully lonely. We'd like players to take a special note of the more pleased look of satisfaction on his face while he's at the table with Masao Kimura. So the reasoning for the purify option was playing on Shimio's religious beliefs rather than the love of nature. He was a cult leader who promised salvation to his followers, believing that if they all kill themselves and use that root and honey combo, they could die and go to the promised land. However, he failed, possibly because he was apprehended by an officer before he could. Feeding him that Larut allows him to go to the heaven he believed in, while destroying him brands him as a traitor who didn't believe the story he sold to so many people. I see. I, I also saw some of you guys sort of elaborate too. The, the whole thing behind this traitor, right? In regards to Mashida, it's also apparently elaborated a bit in the art book that his uh, mentor was basically going undercover as one of the cult members in the Honeybee family. And he was essentially ratting them out to the authorities, hence why there was a traitor considered amongst the group, right? So the person that essentially survived the uh, mass suicide was clearly one of the not chosen and was the traitor of the group. I think that was also part of their mindset as well. But yeah, apparently it's never really elaborated super well in the game. It's actually only in the art book that it's, it mentions the whole thing with Mashita, which is funny. Huh? I guess that part didn't make the cut. It's kind of like some of those details that happen in like 13 Sentinels, right? Where they just were like, oh yeah, what about this thing? There was like so many details going on. I guess it just slipped my mind when we were storyboarding the shit, right? But yeah, because Shimio was this huge fat guy, right? He essentially needed more poison to be able to kill himself. But because he didn't ingest nearly enough compared to everybody else, he was the only one to survive, which drove him even crazier. Or, well, I guess he sort of died, but he became like this weird undead monster ghost thing. So, like, kind of kind of a combination of both, right? Like, he didn't properly die because that combined with the curse made him what he became. Weird bee hole man. But, yeah, the honey plus the root was essentially the combo that led to people being able to poison themselves. So, I see. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. That one, I felt like that really expected a lot from the player to be able to piece it together. Which I don't mind too much. Like, I, I mean, I, I appreciate the game when the game doesn't, like, hold your hand. And this game definitely doesn't feel like it's holding your hand for a lot of these, like, basically puzzles of figuring out how to save or purify uh, the monster. But I wouldn't mind if at the end, if it really did a better job explaining exactly what was going on. It was kind of funny how we got his diary and it, it seemed like uh, 
Uh, Yashiki, like, almost kind of, like, shrugged most of it off. He was just going, yeah, whatever. All this shit doesn't matter anymore. This guy's dead. <laughs> but, uh, Takat Storm, thank you so much for your, uh, incredibly enlightening comment. And it is for that reason you are comment of the day. But all right, that's, uh, two ghosties down. I'm kind of liking the, the relatively brisk pace that I feel like they're moving through the story. I feel like it gives each... Uh, spirit just enough time to like you know be spooky give us their lore the reasoning about what they're doing and for us to figure their shit out to be able to defeat them and they're not like overstaying their welcome i don't know it feels it feels just right so uh, i'm enjoying it i also like that this time around it wasn't like as predictable with now, Mashida again, losing his mark and seemingly maybe this just being the end of his story. I kind of thought he'd just be around for the whole thing. But Christine, actually another person within the group, not being able to find the spirit that actually cursed her. So we'll be sticking around with her for next time, I guess. All right, let's uh, continue then. Head to bed. It's nearly dawn, I better get some rest. Oh wait, <laughs> gotta go talk to, the, talk to the puppet. Mary, are you retiring to bed? Yes, yeah, sleep. Well, I see. Hey, on the bright side, I get to stay at this really fancy, cool mansion while I'm trying to rid myself of the curse that's going to kill me in any moment. But, you know, it's like, it's still basically a free stay at a nice place. I'll be with no one here except a inanimate talking doll. But they put chocolates under my pillows every night, all right? This place is the best. That was a spooky one, though, all right? I'm going to say right now, comparing that one to Hanahiko... This one I thought was way spookier. So what are we going to go into this time? It's been three days since Shimio's defeat. Mashida and Sho have left, leaving only Christy and I at the mansion. We've not any new mark bears arrive, nor any new info on any spirits. Death's footsteps keep drawing closer. And Mary just sits there, staring at me. Hey, you gonna you gonna do something? You gonna do something about that ghost? Hey, you gonna 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 do something? Anything? You just gonna sit here all day, sleep in bed, eat all my chocolates? Hey! Hey, I'm strategizing, okay? Those chocolates help me think. Sure, sure, okay. You just keep telling yourself that, Brosif. I'm the one who has something to buy that shit by the fucking gross off Amazon every fucking day. You don't need to eat forty of them at a time, Lord Yashiki. I told you it helps me think. Good work, Lady Christine Lord Ishiki. Did you obtain any clues? No, nothing really. I'd hoped, but... I see. Lady Saya, Saya's study seemed optimal to contain something of interest. Christy and I just finished investigating Saya Kuja's study. It was full of, of mountains of specialized books and piles of reports. It was a daunting task, but we did our best to search through them, them regardless. Except it was all futile. Everything was about healing the spirit. Nothing mentioned the mark at all. Like yoga and shit. Fucking hell, useless! Hey, Mr. Shiki. Don't you think it's useless to keep searching the mansion? You have any other ideas, then? Well, remember what I said about each shrine? Yeah, no. What? You lost that memory? No, yeah, yeah, it was definitely the definitely the ghost shit that was that that I forgot, yeah. It's in the forest by each castle. I was thinking, maybe this shrine is connected to all of this spirit stuff. Ah, so we are going to go to the shrine after all. That's what Shimio's notes said, right? Everything happening in the forest is the divine wrath of each shrine. Then you think the mark and the spirit activity are because of this divine wrath? It's definitely a possibility. And now, the, now that he's gone, the bees will be fucking out of the way. Disasters happen in many ghost stories and myths because of the wrath of gods. Is there value in looking into it? Maybe. You're making a leap. <laughs> Listen, you're 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 talking out your ass here, Christy, alright? Who knows? Maybe. Exactly what I expect from you. I was so quick on the uptake. Christy's brimming with confidence. She seems in a much better mood than she was three days ago. She's a famous reporter, after all. So maybe this is what she's really like. So, Mary. I'd like to go see a shrine. You don't mind, do you? Hmm. It is true many unpleasant rumors surround that forest. If the cause is a shrine, there may be some clues there. But even if there are, if it's spiritual, then how are normal humans like us supposed to find it? Christine, I don't have spiritual powers. Hmm. 
In that case, could you bring me along with you to each shrine? What? Uh, you mean like, carry you? I should be able to sense the presence of anything spiritual. I can act as a guide as well. You know the sh that shrine? Yes, in truth it enshrines the guardian deity of the Gujo family. Over the generations, the heads have taken care of the shrine. However, that came to an end after the recent war resolved. As one who serves the Kujas, I'm concerned about its present state. Then bring you along would mean... I have to carry you, don't I? As it is impossible for me to walk, I would agree with that assessment. I am sorry to inconvenience you. God, you better not be as heavy as it fucking look. An overgrown forest in the dead of night. And I look forward to having to carry Mary all the way to the shrine. I'll drive, too. <laughs> no, I'm driving. You look worn out, and we haven't left. It's a small price to pay if we can get any hints about the spirits. That's true. I think Mary's eager about this, too, so I'll just have to deal with it, I suppose. Okay, let's go back to the forest. What happened to having to go in, What happened to going in pairs of two? We're just throwing that shit out the window now? Ah, fine, whatever. All right, let's go for it. Connect four. Before we leave, we put Mary in the back seat. Thank God she's not as heavy as she looks. <laughs> hey, there we go. I like you said the exact way that I'd said it. She'll be able to carry her just fine. She wasn't as heavy, heavy as she looked. By the way, Mr. Yashiki, have you read the files over there? She points to the right of the room and shelves packed with files. Not yet. Search most of the mansion, but I haven't checked the garage. Oh, really? Chrissy grabs a file and flips through the pages. Looks like articles on various crimes. The clippings cover every incident in each city in the surrounding area. Was Miss Kujo looking into criminal activity? Any of it look related to the mark? No, not as far as I can tell. They're all, all extremely old. The most recent is dated five years ago. She puts the file back. All right, should we head out soon? I won't hop in the mystery mobile. Or the mystery van, or whatever the fuck it was called. You too, Scooby. Okay! I parked outside the entrance of the forest and gathered Mary into my arms. Oh, Lord. Things way are out here, by the way. <laughs> I should get, like, a little backpack or something. <laughs> like, get one of those little backpacks that, like, used to carry, carry kids and just put her in there and have her hang from the front. Every time I step forward, my knees bang into her, the back of her leg. Oh, oh God! We make our way to the familiar arch. There's still a long way to go. Middle-aged man carrying a doll. You're practically a ghost story yourself if someone sees you here. Oh! Hi! Hi! I'm very sorry to cause you such trouble. Mary stares up at me as I hold her. <laughs> Stop looking at me like that. It's freaking me out. Her skin and hair gl glint bewitchingly when th the light from the flashlight catches them. I have not been outside in a long time. And to go hiking in the arms of such a fine gentleman. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> hold, hold up there, Mary. Good Lord. This is a very precious experience. She sounds as dispassionate as ever, but she actually having fun. <laughs> <laughs> that dead ass deadpan look in her face. So it's just as the rumors say. This forest is filled with the curses and resentment of the dead. Yeah, I mean aside from even Shimio here, there was just like fucking zombies and stuff, you know? You know, it's regular everyday horror shit. Simply their presence is enough to drive the living mad. The land is tainted. I can see why it has given birth to monstrous spirits. I bet if you track down the cause of it, you'll be the divine wrath. Let's hurry to the shrine. I'm gonna go punch a ghost in the face. Okay, good. It just takes me right over here. Reseal tour again with no trouble. We stand and watch for a while, but nothing comes out of the beehives. They seem to be sleeping. That's most likely because Shimio is now gone. His shrine is up those stone steps. In Mary's direction, we walk toward the gate. A small black shadow flits across our face. Oh, God damn it, this fucking bunny again. It's that rabbit again. Hmm. So this is the rabbit you told me about, Lord Ishiki. Yeah, it's the shithead. You are correct. It is very cute. I didn't say that. I didn't say it, bunny, all right? Don't get the wrong idea. The rabbit stares up at, up at the two of us. <laughs> then disappears towards the shrine. 
What in the world was that about? What the fuck? What do you think, Mary? I felt a strange presence. It appears to be possessed by some kind of some kind of soul. So it's a spirit too. Hmm. Really? It seems. I think that it seems like the the rabbit's trying to help us. I think. It's kind of hard to tell though. Besides, it also seems like we're also being lured into danger. But I'm almost wondering if maybe it could be Sayakujo's spirits or something. Beyond the dead in body form! Indeed. Though it does not appear strong enough to give marks to humans. We know nothing of its true nature, so please proceed with caution. We follow the rabbit under the Tory gate and up the stone steps. At the top, we find the wilderness creeping in. There doesn't seem to be anything here but an old altar. It's this each shrine. Sadly, it has fallen into disrepair. The war was over 50 years ago. I suppose this was to be expected. That black rabbit is gone. Deserted shrines give me the creeps. Really? Really? This is the part that gives you the creeps on all the other shit we had to go through beforehand? Like, by this point, this would seem pretty tame by, by comparison. Let's hurry up and get to searching so we don't have to stay here long. Hey there, Buddha man. The headless Buddha statues are buried in the ground. Creepy. Wonder what happened here. There's a secret Shim Shimanawa rope on a ragged boulder. Wonder if that boulder is is in Iwakura. What's that? According to ancient Shinto tradition, it's a sacred rock that a god descended on. It's not uncommon for the rock itself to become an object of devotion. Okay. It's a wooden shrine altar. A clouded old mirror serves as the go, go Shintai. Looks like it's true that no one takes taking care of this place for a long time. I peek inside the altar just in case, but all I find is a thick layer of dust. The ghost Shintai's outside and the altar's empty. That's concerning. I don't think there's any more we can search. The Buddha statues concern me. Why are all the ones within the shrine missing their heads? I don't know. Shimmy up probably did because he was when he got bored or something. It's not like he's had anything else to do this whole time, except for kill people and drink beers with them. Shinto and Buddhism were ordered to be separated during the Meiji period. Before then, many shrines were dedicated to both. Each shrine was much the same, but in the Meiji period, there was a push to make Shinto the main religion. The faiths were forced apart. Extremists stole the Buddhist statues from shrines and desecrated them. Oh, the famous anti-Buddhist movement. So this is where that happened. No, it was done in a public space as they wanted to make a show of it. The broken statues were carried here to serve as a memorial for worship. The Kusho family head was said to be aggrieved, so he moved them in secret. It seems that all the broken statues from around each city were buried here. Strange. You said they were worshipped. This place is pretty much a ruin. You have a keen eye, Lord Ishiki. The shrine was subsequently dug up, and the statues were stolen. So they came all the way into this huge force just to carry off broken statues. Who would do something like that? That I do not know. I merely heard they were stolen 50 years ago, around the time of the war. So the statues are broken, thrown away, and then dug up. They say the Buddha has a wealth of patience, but even he'd get angry. Could that anger have turned to divine wrath and given birth to the mark of spirits? Mary. Have you been able to feel the presence of any spirits or whatever? About that. This land is much more foreboding than I had imagined. The enmity of the forest swallows all else. It is hard to sense beneath it. So, too much background noise, right? Yes. Although, I do sense the same presence as Lady Christie's mark, however faint. I'm sure the spirit gave her the mark is somewhere in the forest. Oh, goody. So, after all that, we were only able to reconfirm something we already knew. Forgive me. I was unable to. You don't have to apologize, Mary. We learned plenty of value here. What do you mean? I'll tell you on the way back. First, let's get the hell out of here. This place gives me the creeps. Maybe it's the ill will Mary sensed. Oh, good, I get to walk out of here. Alright, this is be everything. 
We leave H. Shrine walking down the beast trail toward the forest entrance. Maybe it's because of that strange tail, but for some reason I feel like someone is watching us from the darkness of the trees. It's probably all those random ghosties and zombies that keep biting at my leg. Gotta keep passing by that same fucking hotel over there. Or whatever the hell it is. We get driving back to the mansion. As we break out of the dense forest, I can see building lights pop up here and there. Well, that was a complete waste of time. My anxiety lifted. I don't even bother to filter the words that slip out of my mouth. Oh, I don't think that's true. It's all coming together for me. Without further prodding, Christy starts in on her theory, passion evident in her voice. I believe Shimia was right. A shrine is definitely what's causing all that strange stuff in the forest. I'm sure it's those stolen statues. Don't you agree? I wonder. Feels like we just don't have enough info at this point to say one way or the other. There's no denying that a lot of strange things are going on in that forest. Between all the suicides and Shimia wandering around. It couldn't just be coincidence, could it? If we research the shrine, we might learn more about the mark. I feel that's a lot safer than risking our lives looking for the spirit. Don't you think? You might be right. My replies are half-hearted, which isn't what Christy was hoping for. So she falls silent. An awkward, uncomfortable silence settles. Lord Ishiki, please stop the car. I need to take a pee. <laughs> Mary speaks for the first time since we enter the car. What is it? I sense a presence similar to Lady Christie's mark close by. Oh, goody. Wait, I thought they would be in the forest. This is way outside the forest. I think. Following Mary's request, I park in a vacant rest stop on the outskirts of Ace City. Christie and I step out of the car. Gah! Ah, oh, I got bacon and eggs on my arm. My mark is suddenly scalding. Something nearby. Look, someone's over there. Oh, just a baby. A small girl steps out of the telephone box. Why's that kid outside at this time of night? Thank you for bringing me out this late night, Ida. I got to talk with Hanayomi. Oh yeah, glad to hear it. Oh yeah, glad to hear. Oh, oh my. Ah, no, that. No, oh, never mind. Hold on. I'm. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like absorbing what I'm looking at right now. My God, holy shit, Jesus Christ, monkey dicks. That is the most otaku fucking otaku I've seen since fucking Daru. And for that, I will not to the most rige voice. Let's give him the Daru voice. Rather round young man appears, stepping out of the shadows. You got your question answered, Suzu? Yeah, it's okay now. Hanayomi sure is amazing, though. She knows where everything is. You got that right. She helped me find my limited edition love and hero phone strap I dropped. Ah! Uh, what's love and hero? What? You don't know? There's a popular idol group here. They've been all over TV lately. I'm surprised you haven't heard. TV's restricted at home. Mom says this rots your brain. Oh, Ida, is the bus coming soon? Oh, the last bus is on its way. We better go. We'll be in big trouble if your mom finds out we went out. Yeah. I watched from a distance for a while, but it's hard to determine the relationship. The pay for my scar is suddenly gone. Hey, Christy. What do you think? I turn, but Christy isn't there. What? Hey, you there. Just how do you know that girl? Oh, shit. Turn on your answer, I'll report you for child abduction. To be fair, this is this is a fair. Because <laughs> I think I would simply be like, what is going on over here? Well, there goes Christy, hounding the poor guy. Just calm down. I try to placate her, but she won't budge. Uh, um, I, 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 I. The man stumbles over his words, looks flustered and overwhelmed. Hey, lady, don't be mean to Ida. The girl rushes to st stand offensively in front of him and glares at us. Seems a lot more level-headed than the fluster guy behind her. I 
asked him to help me, okay? I wanted to talk to Hanayomi, so I had him come with me. Who's this Hanayomi you keep mentioning? A ghost who helps find things. People say that you can talk to her from this telephone box. A ghost, huh? She looks at me. We're both thinking the same thing. Oh, goody. Earlier the mark was hurting, so maybe. You guys look serious. Um, what's going on? He nervously glances between us. Does this scar look familiar at all? I show them the mark on my right arm. Hey, hold on. What is this? It looks exactly like mine. And he pulls out his trousers and shows me his ass cheek. <laughs> he pulls off one of his gloves and reveals the mark on his hand. It's the cursed scar, yeah? I saw an article on an OP Arts monthly. They say it causes amnesia. It even kills you. Oh, well, that's nonsense. It's not all true, right? 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 Sounds like he'd heard the rumors, but chose to not do anything about it. It's no surprise, really. It's tough to believe it's real until your memory loss starts becoming noticeable. I've got one of those, too. Uh-oh, baby's got one, too? It showed up on my left wrist when I made that phone call earlier. Oh, fucking... Damn it! This is why you don't fuck... God damn... Ah. This is why you don't go to the fucking... In the middle of the night, go st talk to fucking demons. Playing sleeve that she shows us her mark. They both have the mark, and after calling Hanayome, it's more than coinc um, coincidence. Well, we just can't leave them here. Let's bring them to the mansion. We tell them what's going on and ask them to go to Kujo Mansion with us. Surprised it doesn't take much to get them to come. Thought it'd take more, more convincing. Yeah, also, don't, don't tell your mom about it. Good parts will be because they missed the last bus while talking with us. By the way, don't, t don't look or talk to my doll back there. Before they climb in, I warn Mary to stay quiet until we get back. Might be a bad idea to freak them out. I don't know if them seeing an inanimate doll is just like, like human-sized doll sitting in the back is going to be much better. Just saying. First, we introduce ourselves. The man's name is Ida Nakamatsu. The girl is Suzu Mori Morimiya. It tells us they met through the reader's column in OOP Arts Monthly. Susan mentioned she was interested in Hanayome, and Ida told her what he knew. Then she pestered him into bringing her to the rumored telephone box. They were out this late because of her. Her parents sound pretty strict. Her mother keeps a close eye on her after school, and she needs permission to go out. So she snuck out of the house after her mother went to bed. Hanayome is just as famous in my school as Hanahiko is. Yeah, Hanika, whatever, that's some fucking old news now, right? That little shit is fucking dead. I mean, double dead. Deader. Hey, Ida, please tell them about those rumors. Do I have to? Okay, fine. Ida reluctantly tells us at Susie's request. They're just rumors, our red butt. Chapter 3, Hanayome. Oh, man. Ugh. Ugh. This is the wedding wedding dress lady we saw in the in that one moment in the beginning of the game. Hey, remember that one story? You know, the one about the public phone box in East City? There's a ghost that looks like a bride. She'll find what you're looking for. One of my friends actually tried it. He went to the specific phone box that lets you talk with ghosts. Fun story started wait ringing. Morpheus? Hello there, Neo. I don't know if you're ready to hear what I have to tell you. <laughs> that's not a ghost, that's just Morpheus, damn it. Slowly picked up the phone. But all I could hear was this weird smacking noise. He stayed on the line until. <laughs> Ew, what? <laughs> Did you see it? He heard a woman whisper. So he did what the rumor said to do and said, No, I haven't seen it. And then she said, What do you want to see? His cat had gone missing, so he asked where it was. When he looked where the woman said it was, it really was there. So the rumors are totally true. I want to go ask her where my 
future bride is now. Oh, wanna come with me? Interesting. I, I thought it'd be like, the cat was there, but it was dead. Can I ask her where's Waldo? There. Oh, fucking goddamn it. Uh, I carry Mary from the car and gently place her on the sofa. <laughs> really? It's like I kind of just dropped her ass. Thank you very much. Even if the landing was a bit abrupt. Being in your arms is not bad, but I am most calm when I am here. Please stop hitting on me, Mary. They don't really talk. Oh, yeah. We forgot to mention that. Yeah, she does that. She does this. Don't worry. Used to it pretty quick. I can't say I expected that. Then does that mean all that stuff about the mark is true, too? On the way over, we updated Suzu and Ida with just about all they needed to know. May not completely believe us, but they're not rejecting it outright, either. Seems like Ida in particular has already experienced some memory loss. It's like about forgetting the names of anime characters or voice actors or fucking Johnny Young whatever. Who the, who the hell's that? Percy looked at him strange, but he appears to be taking it quite seriously. And Susu stuck out of her house because she believed the rumors about Hanayome. They both believed in the occult already. I'm pretty sure they'll help us find a way to skip the mark. Granted, they're all also really curious about Hanayome. Pardon me, but may I speak? The marks of Susu and Ida. They are likely from Hanayome. And Lady Christie. The feeling I sense from your mark is the same as theirs. So we can assume that Hanayome also gave the mark to you. Do you recall encountering her? Something weird did happen. Right before I entered the forest, I stepped to the phone box on Team Mountain. The phone rang out of nowhere. Oh, it might be because of that. The telephone box of the rest area is also in the rumors of Hanayome. But, but I, I didn't pick it up. It creeped me out, so I left. I was never able to give that person one final call because of that. Who are you talking about? It's not for children to know. Shut up! Fine. So there are other phone boxes like that. Damn. Um, I think there are three that Hanayome will call from. The one we went to in the uh, A Highway parking lot is one. And one is at T-Mountain Rest Area. That's the one Miss Christie went to. And, um, Ida, where's the last one? At the park by T cop apartment complex. It's the only one inside the city. But why just those three locations? Oh no. BBS I read didn't say. Um, mister, do you really think Hanayume is the one who gave us the marks? Of course, maybe not. I don't know. But the rumors of Hanayume go back five years. And no one's ever mentioned that if you call her you'll get a mark. Suzu's right. Rumors about this mark thing only popped up super recently. So you're saying Hanayome hasn't always been giving out the mark? If that's true, I wonder what triggered the change. Of course, I can't really say, seeing as I don't know anything about spirits. Or me! I guess helping people find what they're looking for. That's pretty strange. Definitely the definition of a ghost story. You must not believe in ghost stories, Miss Tyler. Hey! Mr. Yashiki, if those rumors are true, why don't we try asking where the stolen statues are? If we return them to their places, they might just save our lives. Search for the Buddha statues. If Christie's right, we might be able to skip the mark without fighting a spirit. Mary, what do you think? A good question. Objects with human forms are easily able to gain inexplicable powers. Bleeding stone statues, cursed dolls, there are many examples. Historical statues of gods and Buddhas would certainly be no exception. Asking Hanayome about them would be a good idea. So this is the doll before our eyes that has the inexplicable power to talk. Maybe it wouldn't be strange that Buddha statues could bring down divine wrath. Lord Ishiki, may I add? As I explained previously, your mark is... It is different from the others. Vanquishing spirit seems to weaken your mark's power. So it's been several days since you told me that I was going to die. Taking care of the spirits we encountered is likely how I'm still among the living. What are you trying to say? 
I cannot say what the relationship between your mark and Hanayomi is. But it is true, it is in your best interest to track down spirits. I hope you will guide these mark bearers this evening as well. Can't really picture Christy and Ida facing off against a spirit by themselves. If they failed, then a child would suffer the deadly consequences. That would weigh heavily on me. No turning back. I'll figure something out. Thank you. Mary bows her head slightly. Oh, that was the creaking of her head. Now, you should begin investigating Hanayomi. Why does she only call from the three public phones from within each city? Her sticker may lie in the answer. You visited the parking lot already. Please investigate T Mountain at the Park by T apartment complex. Okay. Oh god, I actually picked picked the little girl. And the weeb! Uh, rumors of Hanayome. With the end of the 90s, online infrastructure has advanced the popularity of a certain widely used BBS. Hanayome is an urban legend that sprung up from that BBS. It goes as follows. Certain telephone booths in each city will let you talk to ghosts. If you go inside one and wait, the phone will suddenly ring. Pick it up and you will hear a strange lip-smacking sound. A woman will ask, have you seen it? Rumor says you're supposed to reply with, I haven't seen it. To respond with, what do you want to see? Someone actually followed the instructions and was able to find a missing pet. What a strange tale. A lot of people are interested in this ghost wanting to find things or people who have become lost. But the circumstances seem to imply the spirit gave the mark to Ida and Suzu. Plus, why is this spirit called a bride? She appears as a bride and someone must have seen her. Three phone boxes in each city let you speak with a ghost. Well, this used to be the one Ida and Suzu used. It should take long to reach the other two by car. I'm concerned about the statue stole from each shrine, too. If Hanayome really can't tell us where they are, that would save us a lot of time. There's only one way to find out, motherfucker. Oh, cool. I can actually read uh, previous uh, profiles for or my, some of my previous partners. It actually says, Aftermath, survive. Safely return to normal life. Survived. 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 That's cool. I'm not sure if I read, technically, read their uh, profiles. To, and I think about it. I don't know if I read shows. An injury forced this former baseball player to quit. His prickly attitude seems to stem from that, but he treasures his friends. His tough act is a cover for how he's terrified of the supernatural. And he came to Kujo Mansion for help. Chrissy Aramura, a famous former news anchor who was forced to resign because of a scandalous affair. She came to the force to commit suicide. She has strong spiritual powers and often hears mysterious voices or sees ghost-like figures. It's kind of funny, but she has absolutely zero interest in it, right? Um, Suzu Morimiya, a young girl who, who called Hanayome to ask her something and received the mark. She was raised in a complicated household and is extremely mature. The only th thing childish about her is her love of animals. Ida Nakamatsu, self-employed or so he says, an occult maniac who's addicted to BBSs. He met Suzu through the reader's columns in OOP Arts Monthly, and she idolizes him like a big brother for whatever reason. This is the beginning of the hottest summer in the life of Ida, age 33, and there's this fucking weird other animation. Ah, what a lovable group of fucking weirdos. All right, who are we going with? Fuck you, Christy. We're gonna pick one of these two. Uh, the actual child or the fucking otaku? Uh, I guess we'll go with the sweaty otaku. Uh, that's his hentai sounds. All right, rest area and park. Let's go to the rest area. The phone booth stands solitary on the edge of the vacant rest area. An endless sea of trees stand behind it. Chrissy must have run into the forest after she heard the phone ring. Bark, bark. I can hear a dog howl from nearby. It almost sounds sad. I'm probably just imagining it. Actually, should I bring Chrissy here because she's the one that encountered it potentially here? Doesn't seem to bother Ida. He's only paying attention to the phone box. That's gotta be the booth the rumors mention. Something about it just feels off. Like everything's telling me this is it. Rumors say the phone is supposed to ring if you wait by for a while. Guessing waiting outside doesn't count. Yeah, probably not. When I tried it, it didn't ring until after I got inside the thing. But the booth is too small for two people. Either I or I will have to go in. I I'll pass. I'm uh, kind of big, so yeah, me and craft spaces don't work. Guess I'll have to go in. cramped inside and almost impossible to move around at all. I'd be a sitting duck if a spirit attacked me while I'm in here. The cloud of glass makes it hard to see the outside. That just makes me more nervous. I wonder how long I have to wait until the phone rings. 
past the time, I glanced around at the inside of the booth. There's a poster attached to the window. Help our investigation. On the night of February 8th, 1990X, an assault took place in the forest nearby. If anyone has any info on this case, please notify H Police Department. This is dated five years ago. Looks like something terrible happened here. <gasps> Talk to me! The phone begins to ring. I hesitantly reach out and pick it up. The only sound I hear is the dial tone. No one is speaking. What's going on? Someone's chewing gum on the other end of that phone line. Suddenly there's a strange noise. Crunching, smacking. The sound of saliva as someone chews. Tucked in the smacking is a woman's voice. The voice is creepy, cold, and chills me down to the bone. Is this Hana Yome? Did you see it? She asks a second time. The rumor mentions that I should say. No, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. Very seriously, I say I haven't seen it. What do you want to see? It's going exactly as the rumor said. Hanayome is supposed to tell you the location of whatever you're looking for. Chrissy told me to ask about the Buddha statues that were stolen from a shrine. Give it a try. Buddha statues. Lord Buddha. Doesn't your armor have the mark of the Buddha on it? Tell me, you want the new Buddha? Why are you doing that? Tell me. Well, tell me. Tell me, tell me. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Tell me, 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 tell me. The line goes dead. Woman's screen is still ringing in my ears. That ain't going all how I was supposed to go. I feel sick. Must be because of my brush with that blood curdling insanity. Why didn't she answer my question? It was different from when the others asked. Was she all like juiced up because of divine punishment or something? Divine power? Whatever's causing the whole thing with the these ghosties leaving marks on people? Maybe she got turned from a benevolent spirit to a not so benevolent spirit. Mark of my arm burns dully. It's reminding me it exists. Maybe this is why she was acting strangely. She did say something to the effect that Buddha gave me this mark. Was she just too insane to differentiate between Buddha and a monstrous spirit? Or is this mark really the work of a divine wrath from the Buddha statues? I wait a while longer, but the phone doesn't ring again. There's no point in staying in here. Come back out and I goes fucking dead. As soon as I leave the booth, Ida comes up to me. You're dressed as swat. Just like me. Does something happen? I tell Ida about my conversation with Hanayome. Weird. Don't well, mention that online. I was brow furrows in confusion. Anyway, why don't we try going to the other phone booth? There could be clues there. You could try there too. So no time to get lost in thought. The last phone booth is at the park by the T apartments in the other direction. We'll head there after stopping at the mansion. It's probably wise to ask Mary what she knows is on the way. Hmm, okay. Oh, I actually can't look around this area. Oh yeah, what's this shit? Six power, ten intelligence, six uh spirit power, and insane dexterity for some reason. What the fuck? Why are you so dexterous? Do I even want to know? Actually, I just realized I have no tools. That's funny. In the phone booth, there's a poster looking for info on a crime that happened nearby. The phone rings while I'm distracted, just like the rumors when I pick up a phone and a warm answer is smacking her lips. But I can't get info on the statues from her. For some reason, she's behaving different from what we were told to expect. 
There's one more fun telephone booth. We better check it out, too. All right, back to Cujo. Tell Mary what happened to the phone, phone box. You say Hanayomi acted strangely. She called the spirit that cursed you with your mark Buddha. I cannot say I know what she saw. Before you said, she would likely not respond to your question. That does not mean she does not understand you, however. Use any method available to obtain as much information as you can. Okay. Okay, this time, we'll take the girl. All right, to the park. Come on, little girl. You'll keep me safe, right? I see a small park tucked between all the looming apartment buildings. There's no one here. I guess everyone's already asleep. I'm sure that's a telephone booth from the rumors. I don't know that I'm here. I still have no idea why Hanayome hung up on me. I followed the rumors exactly. Where did I go wrong? I scratched my head. Ah, my brain! Don't adhere to the gossip. Defy it. Oh. Okay, so don't follow... Don't follow the, uh... The usual shit, huh? Suddenly I hear that strange voice again. Gossip. In other words, the rumors. What will happen if I don't follow the rumors? Suzu, go back to the car. There's something I want to try. But it might end up backfiring on me. Okay. Please be careful, mister. Oh, wait one second. Um, I have a message from Ida. Oh? Yeah, he says there's no info on the Hanayome. Here it is. Suzu hands me a note written by Ida. Don't talk about eyes or things like it when you're on the phone with Hanayome. If that ca call goes sideways somehow, don't say I, okay? I, all right. Yes, yeah, best to avoid anything that even sounds like I. What? Don't say I. There's nothing else. No, that's all. But I just said that he was sure it would help. I'll keep it in mind. Zuzu returns to the car. Oh, Lord. I step inside and wait for the phone to ring. There was a poster in this booth, too. Just like the one at the rest area. This looks like it's been here for a few years. A uh, young woman kidnapped. A young local woman was kidnapped close to this location. If you were witness to this crime, please notify the police and PD. February 8th, five years ago. I think the poster I saw at the rest area had the same exact date. Coincidence. There are no coincidences. Phone rings. I grab the receiver and slowly pick it up. Ah, blah, blah, blah. Hear a noise like someone chewing gum from the other side of the phone. An icy cold voice speaks. Did you see it? Nope. I saw it. You saw it, didn't you? You saw the thing of me. Uh-oh. The voice cuts off. Oh, fuck! Something outside collides violently with the glass of the booth, but I can't see it. Oh, God. Live or die! So nothing includes the eye in it, huh? Tell me, how did you see it? With old eyes? Or eyeglasses? A telescope? Um... Telescope. Safe. Sounds like something's searching around the outside of the phone box. You saw it. You said you saw it. What color? A beautiful color. Red, pink, green. Uh. I think it was red, not I. Uh, pink? Probably green? Uh oh. Oh no, why? Oh fuck, it fucked up. Oh, I, I got it. Suddenly the phone goes dead. It likely, 
likely green. Yeah, uh, I I think it uh, was red. It, it, it was it was actually pink. I was I was looking at the letters specifically, but I mean the letter was still in likely too. Fungus dead. This isn't good. Housekeeping. <laughs> Someone knocks on the glass door. Is something wrong? Are you okay? Is there a stranger passing by? I guess I'm wondering what's going on with me. It's a relief to hear a normal person's voice. Y yeah, sorry. It's nothing, really. <laughs> ah! So turning around, I feel the door of the booth violently fly open. Two dark, shadowy arms are the last thing my eyes see that is burning in my retinas. Wow! Fuck! Okay. Creepy ass fuck game over. Actually, kind of glad I at least to see that. All right, so we'll get we'll get it right this time. Okay, pink. Safe. Stop chewing your bubblegum in my ear, please. You suck. What kind of person are you? What's important to you? Your dreams. Romance? Love? Which... Which do you choose? Definitely my dreams. I believe in love. Romance is great. I get it. I get it. I lived. Fungo's dead. Next thing I know, the bloody handprint is gone, and so is the ominous presence. The questions she asked me were strange. She was particularly anxious about what I had seen. I think I did a good job not mentioning anything like eyes in my answers. Overly conscious over being seen. Maybe that's where she, her secret lies. Don't you fucking look at me! I exit the booth and Suzu rushes up to me. My mark suddenly started hurting. Did something happen? I tell Suzu about what happened in the telephone booth. I wonder what that was about. Guess there's no way she'd know the answer. Huh? There's something on the ground. Sure enough, there's a folded up piece of paper lying near the booth. It's like a piece of stationery. I don't think it was there before I went into the phone booth. I pick up the paper and open it. To Seiko, I'll dispel all of your heartache. So forget that horrible incident and take your quiet rest up in heaven. I mean, Psycho! <laughs> it's not Seiko, it's Psycho! Hmm. An incident. The posters I saw in the telephone booth mentioned something like that too. Could they be connected? I ask Susan what they think. Is it a coincidence or... Susan so worries, worries at her lip. Um, we've gone to all the boxes now, so we should go back? I want to share all this with Ida and Miss Christie. Yeah. We should probably head back for now. Third phone box. It's funny how I have no items in this one from the start. Uh, Hanayama is acting even more strangely than before. She seems anxious about being seen, her eyes in general. It's impossible to be sure since it's only over the phone. Plus, the note we found outside the phone booth, the, the booth is disconcerting. To Seiko, I'll dispel all your heartache. So forget that horrible incident and take your quiet rest up in heaven. All right, baby, let's go back. Oh, welcome back. Christy's there in the gar garage. She's going through the files full of articles on criminal cases. How did the investigation go? Um... Suzu and I tell Christy what we discovered. Hmm, I see. I see Christy's mind working. Hey, Mr. Uh, Yashiki. You know those posters and that bit of stationery you found? Could they be linked to Hanayome? She might have been someone who was caught up in the incident and killed. If that's the case, then... She glanced over at the files. The dates were five years ago, right? Then there might be an article on what happened here in these files. Let's get Ida to help out, too. Go get a move on. 
All four of us begin reading through the files. The clippings range from the smallest dispute to the most heinous crime in each city. But they're all dated five years ago or earlier. Do they get stored in the garage because they're so old? After a while... I think I found it. The date matches the posters, and the victim's name is Seiko. Suzu lays the file out on the desk, and we all peer at it. The file is articles about an incident that happened five years ago. The victim's name was Seiko Hasegawa. Apparently, she committed suicide in the Forest Page capital on the eve of her wedding. She was in her dress when she was found. Uh, Suzu, you probably shouldn't read anymore. It's pretty bad. Thanks, Ida. But I want to know more about Hanayomi. I feel like I need to do this. She's cringing, but she sounds determined. Between this and sneaking out at night, she's a surprisingly brave kid. It's rather odd for someone her age. I remember now. This happened back when I used to be a news anchor. Christy mutters just loud enough to hear. Then do you know the whole story? It was horrible. It's hard to recount. A woman was abducted by a gang while she was walking her dog. They brought her to the forest and assaulted her. People found her battered and staggering along the road the next day. The dog was run over and killed near the forest when it chased after them. Ugh. That's horrifying. Yeah, but that wasn't the end of Seiko Hasegawa's misfortune. Ida somberly cuts in. His usual grin is nowhere to be found. It's well known in some circles, but her assault was photographed. The pictures were sent to her fiancé. Oh. They threatened to make them public if he didn't pay up. Already gave them a ton of money to get the photos and the and, and the negatives. Is that true, Christy? Yeah, I heard that as well. Because of all that, Miss Seiko had a mental breakdown, and in the end, she hung herself. Ugh. She'd been a serious, honest woman, so she just couldn't bear it. Ah, hence the blackmail. Interesting. We're actually getting a much clearer story on this one. Then, uh, well, I guess technically we kind of did with Hanahiko too. I just feel like Shimio's out of all of them was really the most like truly kind of vague one. We're like, man, you really got to figure this one out. In terms of like, yeah, because like with the the with Hanahiko, we found like literally a diary that sort of explained it. I think Shimio was just kind of the outlier. The cruel fate of a woman attacked for her wedding. We fall silent as that reality weighs on us. Um. Suzu timidly speaks up, her face pale. Maybe there's a connection between her and what happened to Miss Hasegawa. And Hanayome's phone boxes? According to the article, the incidents that wrecked her whole life took place near each phone box. She was abducted by the park and assaulted by the rest area. She was found wandering near the parking lot by a highway. The phone booths connect Hanayome and Seiko Hasegawa. The coincidence sends a shiver down my spine. So that note we found in the telephone booth. Did Seiko's fiance write it? Most likely. What's strange is it was there, and not where she committed suicide. Yeah. Did how many Yomi put it there? Maybe she was telling us something. I have no clue how spirits think, but if Susan is right, that note is an important clue for us. I seem to recall Miss Seiko's fiance was a famous musician. As a result, the case was widely publicized at the time. It happened right after they returned from a romance trip to Greece. Old ladies were sobbing about how it made it all the more tragic. And the poor dog they brought on the trip died heroically as well. Where's the fiancé now? Well, he began acting strange due to the shock and then went missing. Huh? Some say, say he, her suicide was to follow him. But he wasn't the only one who disappeared. It sounds like all, all, all of the culprits went missing, too. Ha ha ha! That's some fucking divine justice there. You hear that, about that online, too? Well, something like that. The internet wasn't the same back then. There were only hubs. Oh, guys, you guys stuck in the 90s internet, though? Dude, it's gonna get way worse. <laughs> hubs, like pre-internet chat rooms. Everyone was talking about it on the occult hubs back then. There was one person in the community who knew way too much. I think he was one of the culprits. He brought a bunch of things like taking pictures and all that. And I bet those were pictures of the assault. Yeah, that's right. They were, after they were finished, those assholes got a camera out. 
took pictures of her, her face soaked with tears. Whole time she yelled, don't look, don't look. Don't look, huh? Hanayome has an extreme reaction to being seen by others. He kept going on about it, night after night, until he suddenly stopped posting. People who knew him said they couldn't contact him at all. Those guys deserve to die. But still really creepy, you know? <laughs> that is, uh, all kinds of fucked up. Suddenly a lie from the note pops into my head. I'm despairing with a heartache. Hey, Christy. Do you happen to know exactly where in the forest Seiko killed herself? I was a reporter at the time, so I did go to the location. But that was five years ago, so I don't remember exactly. I feel like I went west from that big arch at the entrance. So you're really going to go? Yeah. Might be able to figure out something about Hanayome. Okay, mister. I'll do my best. Hmm. Yikes. This is a fucked up one here. They're all pretty fucked up, but... This one feels uh, a little extra fucked. The garage shells contain files and axes and crimes within each city from the decades old to just a few years ago. We all search through them and find a case of the victim named Seiko Hasegawa, the person mentioned in the note. Details of, details of her case are sickening. The victim was abducted by a group as she was walking her dog in the forest while awaiting her wedding day. She was found by a phone booth along the highway the next day. But that's not all. The culprits photographed the assault and blackmailed her fiancé with the photos for money. A few days later, all the stress caused her to kill herself. Her fiancé went missing afterwards, with people believing he also committed suicide. Christy investigated the case back then. She says the fiancé was a famous musician. To Seiko, I'll dispel all of your heart heartache. Those words bother me, but there's something else too. And that's the fact that the coppers also went missing after she died. I'll dispel all your heartache, huh? I almost wonder if uh, that might be the key for her for saving her as it's going to be like music or something, you know? This ghastly case is still unable to gain full closure. The phone box that guided us to this case. The fact that the woman who hung herself wore a wedding dress. The connections to the forest by H. Castle. The other Mark Bears won't like it, but we need to go back to the forest. But why am I so sure of that? Ida or Christy or Suzu? Let's go with Christy. I mean, apparently she, she was the one who fucking you know, did a report on this, so she'd probably be the one to remember where it is. I mean, granted, she said west of the gate. I don't know. Maybe she'll probably notify some extra insight beyond that. To the forest again! It was more awkward than I thought. Being alone with someone who, until recently, was planning to kill herself. Do you have something you want to say? She noticed right away. Was I being that obvious? No, not really. It's fine. You don't have to hide it. You're wondering if I still want to kill myself, aren't you? Is this wo a woman's intuition? No, maybe I'm just crap at hiding things. Don't worry. I don't want it anymore. People hate it when things are forced on them, right? Doesn't matter what it is. I could trust you, right? Yes. At least for now. Here's something she keeps feeling the same. At least while we're together. What do you mean for now? Just when the tire has a bump in the road. I can see a square gray object in the back seat through the rear view, rear view mirror. Huh? Is that the thing back there yours? No, that's Ida's CD radio cassette player. Huh? Oh, something like that. He said we might need music during the drive. Then wouldn't put it in here himself. Hey, I already, already getting a, a hit that I might be right. Uh, already getting some music here. But we don't have any CDs or tapes. Should I turn on the radio? No, I'll pass. The conversation grinds to a halt after that. It's like there's an invisible person between us. After falling silent a while, Christy finally speaks up again. It don't make sense for the conversation to turn one direction. It's rather worrisome, don't you think? After all this time, they don't know. Who doesn't know what? Those two. They think that the spirit just helps you find things. What a naive fairy tale. Yeah. Christy is exactly right. You quickly become dis disillusioned once you actually face the spirit. But thinking about it, wouldn't that be best? Christy looks at me in shock. Wait. 
What are you saying? I just mean... Our lives are on the line here. Would you stop joking around? Sorry. She's furious at me. It looks like she was telling the truth about not wanting to die. She's got too much pride. Someone like that would never commit suicide. What's so funny? Nothing. Will we make it back again? I stare at the headlights and contemplate where we're going. Back to these fucking woods again. <sighs> that sign was pretty deep. I can't believe we're here again. At least I can feel better knowing he's not around anymore. I almost remind her about Hanayome. But I stop myself from opening my mouth. I don't want to break her tenuous calm. Okay. It's supposed to be west of the gate. I look to the west of the gate again. There's no sign of a trail. Strange. Maybe I'm remembering wrong. When I came here researching on the article, there was a path to the west. Oh, well, do I say this gate? Oh, okay. I thought it was the, the Shuri, the, the, the Tori Shrine Gate. So, like, Christy's face stiffens. What's wrong? I, I, I feel cold all of a sudden. <gasps> oh, fucking goddamn piece of shit. <laughs> oh, my God. It's freaked the fuck out of me. What the hell is that? Oh, it's her demon dog. I follow their gaze and see a hollow shadow dashing out from the darkness. A dog? Sony seems like one. It kicks up the dirt with four legs. But it looks off somehow. Its fur is long and disheveled, and from certain angles, its face looks human. The dog stares at us, growling softly. What is it? Are you trying to tell us something? You're being too gentle with it. You just sound firm when you talk to a dog. Act like it's master. Weaker dogs like to bark, right? So ignore it and stay quiet. So ignore it and stay quiet, huh? Because that's true for humans, too. Powerful people tend to ignore others. Okay. I'll keep that in mind. Dog barks loudly, then vanishes into the western underbrush. The moment it's gone, the chill in the air dissipates like it was never there. Was it trying to guide us? Maybe. Good doggo! I shone the flash on the spot where the dog disappeared. And now familiar pain shoots through my wrist. Ah, bacon! The mark's color grows more vivid. A few more hours left until death closes them. There's probably not much time left. Better hurry. Let's check the bushes over there. Let's get the forest again. Still nothing in my bag. I didn't take the cassette player with us. I think it will be the key to this. Upon return to the forest, a strange dog appears. It growls us before disappearing to the western thicket. Christy says the place she's checked in the past was in the west also. Still, that dog didn't look natural. So this is a good sign since we're chasing after a spirit. But the mark warns that time is short. We have to hurry. Uh, okay, so forward. I believe we're supposed to look at the west of the gate. This is in the right. This is, oh. Oh. I was I was hitting left and I was like, it's not working. No, I have to I have to flash my flashlight. I got you. Take it next to the trees. Go. With the dog gone. I push my way into the underbrush. I spot the traces of what used to be a path. I can barely call it one at this point. It's supposed to be the closed hiking trail. The path goes west from the gate. That's right. I remember now. This is the path I took before. That dog was trying to show show this to us. Who knows? Anyway, let's get going. Just don't kill us later, please! Or any bullshit out here? Fuckers gonna pop out and scare me? Better not be pissed. Don't do it, dickheads. Alright. Oh, hey, something. Something in the grass at the foot of the tree. It's a wad of paper. Push the grass aside and pick it up. Kind of worn out. Hey, I haven't found one of these in a while. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, left. 
Oh, that just looks great. Before we look at that, anything else around you? No. Oh, wait. Can't see well from here. Huh? Feel around the blades of grass. Instant camera. Hit the switch before I realize it and a red light appears. Apparently that means that the flash can be used. Uh, this probably relates also to, uh, I, I'm going to bet this is going to be something for keeping her at bay, right? With the flash of the camera. Must have battery left. Not that we're going to take any pictures with it. So you say. You're right. I turn it off and quickly stuff it in my bag. Now, that's wise not to mention the dry blood that's stuck to the bottom of it. To see is to perceive light. That distant voice echoes in my head. True. Seeing something means you're seeing the light it's reflecting. But what does that have to do with Hanayome? Okay. In the bushes below the tree, I found a dirty instant camera. The back rays take a picture, flash included. The voice whispers to me again to see is to perceive light. Things that emit light, the camera. But Seiko Hesagawa had detested that light. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. What the fuck is this? I shine the light on the grove of trees in front of us and catch a glimpse of something odd. Huh? What is that? Something's posted there. I can't make it out from here. I move forward for a closer look. Yeah. Pictures of the blood all over the, or are the pictures bleeding? What is this? All thought in my mind ceases. This is if I'm unable to process what I'm seeing and my brain goes to a, comes to a halt. Are these photos? There are a bunch of pictures of different people posted to the tree. But they're all... All these photos have nails in the eyes. It's just as Chrissy said. For some bizarre reason, each photo has a person with nails driven through both eyes. I touch the nails some kind of tape. Cold sweat drips down my back. What kind of grudge would cause someone to do something like this? Hey, all the people in these pictures. Are they all men? Chrissy mutters just, or just loud enough to hear. Huh? Look over the photos again. A good number of them are deteriorated, so they're hard to make out. But they may be, but they may be right. Yeah, looks like it. All the subjects are men. That's clearly not a coincidence. I feel a little dizzy and step back. Through my blurry vision, something flashes in the light from the flashlight. What's wrong? Nothing. It's just over there. Something sparkled up there. Something might be there. Let's check it out. Up here? Something up there in the branches of the tree is reflecting light. Something must be stuck in the branches. The only way we'll be able to check it out is to climb up the trunk. Are you thinking about climbing the tree? No, you are! What? Get up there! There aren't any cavities, knots, or branches within reach. It'll be hard to climb up it. So. Climb the tree myself. Ask my partner. Boost my partner up. Forget it. Boost my partner up. Uh -huh. Um, this is just between us, but... I, I weigh... She whispers in my ear. Okay, that's off the table. Haha, <laughs> really? Ask my partner. I refuse. There's no way I can climb that. So that's not going to work. I guess just me. I take a deep breath and jump at the tree. I struggle to reach for a while and manage to touch a branch until... Oh, my... Ah! I crash the ground with a spectacular thud. Ow. I told you. Thanks. So, seriously? So I just can't... Okay, I guess forget it. Give up and back away. I guess I need something for it. Oh, 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 no, I need, I need a different partner. Different partner. So obviously I need the little girl to come out. <laughs> All right, uh, back. All right, to the right. God, that'd be really funny if that actually was the answer. <laughs> Bring Suzu over here. Come on, Suzu, lift me up. Ah, God damn it. 
I mean, granted, well, I guess I I could lift her up, potentially. Actually, actually, maybe that is the answer. That might be easier than he. I mean, th this little weeby dude. Actually, actually, that might be the answer. <laughs> I was more just thinking of like her trying to lift me up, but that actually might be the right answer, as long as you know I don't get her killed in the process. Okay, boost my partner up. If that's all, then okay, I'll try. Get up there. I squat at the base of the tree and let her climb up on me. Up you go. I stagger a bit, but manage to stand. I feel like I'm one of the trees now. Can you reach? Just a little to the right. I'm almost there. Ah! Susan reaches as far as she can with her hand and I lose my balance. I both crash to the ground. Ow. You okay? I'm fine. I'm here. Susan so shows me her hands. It's holding the object that was stuck in the branches. Dog collar. Collar. Makes me think of that dog we saw before coming here. Does this belong to that dog? Wonder who threw it away? Who knows? So putting it away in my bag, I spot an inscription on the inside of the collar. Uh Renta? How are you supposed to pronounce that? Yeah. <laughs> the picture's on the tree. In the west side of the forest, we found a tree covered in strange photos of men, and they all have large nails driven into their eyes. They're likely all dead. It's some kind of warning that men will be killed. I saw something when I look up into the tree. It's hard to get down, but it turns out to be a dog collar. It does belong to the dog we saw in the, en in the, at the entrance. The article on Seika we found in the garage said the body was het of the d her pet dog was found in the forest. It was killed chasing after the culprits. It seems she even brought it on her trip to Greece with her fiance right before she was abducted. Looks like the dog's name is on the collar, but how do you pronounce that? Renta. Doesn't look like English. All the foes are men. There's blood everywhere. This belongs to the person who put the nails in. I grab the tape that's wrapped around the nails to take a good look at it. Looks like an audio tape that's been pulled out of a cassette. Hey! I'll take out the dog collar and fucking do some shit with it. No, I'm sorry. I think it's the camera. No, definitely. I'm going to definitely come back for that. Maybe I need like a pencil or something to, to, to spindle it up. Uh-oh. I hear a little growl from somewhere. I can't see what's making it, but it seems to be watching me. Oh, we did see that dog at the gate. I'm not sure why, but I feel an intense hostility directed toward me. What should we do? This is Suzu speaks. The growling grows distinctly quieter. Remember the photos. All of them were men with nails in their eyes. I don't know what, what that has to do with the dog. But if those pictures demonstrate the hatred that saturates this place, if I'm with Suzu, I might, it might react differently. So not the weeb. Consider my options. Turn back. Show the collar. Got an idea. Take the collar out of my bag. Maybe. It's a safe bet that the spirit was born here, so the dog is likely tied to this collar. I face the general area the parking is coming from and show it the collar. Dog appears like a gust of wind. Whoa! Before I can blink, it seals the collar from me. <gasps> Live or die! When I try to quickly jump away, I hear Suzu call out to me. Mr. Shiki, don't look! But I don't catch the rest of it. The dog rushes at me so fast it looks like it's gliding over the ground. Dodge, kick it, no! Fucking stand still. Fucking kill me right here. Hit me, doggy. Dog stops in his tracks. Seems confused that I'm not reacting, just staying still. He shuffles back on his guard and prepares to attack again. It bears his teeth and growls. Threaten it loudly. Turn my back to it. Pet it. No. Turn my back to it. I break my gaze and turn my back to it. And it's not there to not hear it threatening me. Growls for a while until it abruptly stops. Ignore, doggo! Dog holds the collar in his mouth and stares at me. The collar has an inscription on it, doesn't it? I'm sure it said... Renta! What should I call it? 
Oh, shit. Oh, no. Oh, that's fucked up game. Lenta, Genta, Senta. Lenta? Lenta. Murder the name. Dog perks his ears. I say it again this time more clearly. Then. Oh, damn it. Come on. That's fucked up. Ah, oh, come on. How the hell am I supposed to know? Dolphin scares me. It's clear. Get clear. Face out. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, God. And then my fucking whole head exploded. <laughs> Look at the sound effects. Of when I die, it's always like the same. It sounds like, it sounds like some like happy wheel sound effects, you know? Like the kid explodes and the dad goes, damn it. Ah, oh, come on, man. Come on. Is it Russian? I don't know. I was like, it looks like an upside down L, maybe. Santa. Nope, dead. God damn it. Ah. Oh. That's just bullshit. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, it's Genta. That's got a Argenta. It's got a Gaja sound to it. Genta. I'm out of the name. The dog perks his ears. And then. Oh, God damn, what the fuck? Oh, come on. Fire piece of show. I say it again this time more clearly. And then. Like, but turns out they were all wrong. His name is actually Billy. The dog turns around and quietly slinks into the brush. Disappears from sight. Seems like someone managed to escape death. Eventually. Eventually. I lived. I pick up the collar that was left behind and sighed deeply. Are you okay? Yeah, you know, I just died a few times, so it's fine. Yeah, that was. Can't say it was no big deal. My words simply trail off. So I can answer with. I pat myself down with my hands, but I don't seem to be injured anywhere. I did feel teeth biting in my hand when the collar was snatched from me, though. That dog may be supernatural. You fucking think so, Yashiki? Hope it doesn't attack again. I think we'll be fine. It found what it was looking for. You're right. Or did it? I found the bacon bitch it was looking for. Well, all right, guys. I think this is probably a good spot to end things here for now. I'm liking this one. This one, I feel like, mixed up the formula a little bit, too, where it kind of seemed like everything was kind of like, all right, we go to a new place, and then we, you know, we try to find the ghost, and then we get chased out by the ghost, then we come back again. This was actually a bit different, right? We went to a few different locations with the phone booth. And suddenly, we've actually returned to the woods where we're going to a new area of the woods. Like, they're kind of keeping us on our toes here and, like, changing the formula uh, even just, like, a little bit, which is very smart. Very, very smart. The worst thing that happened in, in, like, a story like this, especially, like, a horror story, is is to make the, the what's happening feel predictable, right? No, that's that's what always... Well, that's what's terrifying about these kinds of games is, is their unpredictability. You never know what the hell's going to happen. Like, a fucking dog with a human face is going to come flying out of nowhere. Or some crazy bride lady is going to slap you slap your phone booth till you open it up, and then she fucking grabs you with her big, giant claw hand. So I'm digging it. I am digging it. But I hope that you guys are as well. Uh, and if you are, please leave a like and a favorite. It really does help me out. And hey, if you're not subscribed, why not? Become a picky penguin aboard the SLP, where the days are always sunny and the vids are always funny. And as always, guys, till next time, stay classy.